was part of the, of the Idaho Songs Project. It's been, uh, we've, we've uh, being a, a, a musical historian out of Boise, uh, Gary Eller, have put out uh, three CDs by now of a whole bunch of different Idaho songwriters, uh, mostly cataloging uh, pre-radio um, Idaho music, music that was pretty much, pretty much about Idaho, and uh, and so this is this is a song that, that I wrote for the for the current project that uh, that we just finished. It's called "Badasses and Dad Disasters of Early Idaho," and it, it's mostly about Idaho history and events in Idaho that happened of historical interest that nobody had ever written a poem or a song about, and. Uh, and there are, uh, and, I, and I wrote one poem and, uh, and two different songs about that. And this is the shortest one that's on there, because if I did the other two, I'd take up way, much, way too much time for my compadres here. So this is, uh, this is a song about uh, an African, an African uh, orphan who was brought to the United States by the Talbot family, and they settled in the Salt Lake Valley and he became the first casualty, recorded casualty, of the sheep wars, or the cattle sheep wars in southern Idaho that happened down around Oakley and Albion in those days, the 1880s. On a moonlit night in Oakley, a ghostly marker glowed. In a well-kept cemetery, it covers up the bone. Of a dark-skinned son of Africa who learned to ride and wrangle. He lived out here among us. His name was Gobo Fango. His dying outcast mother left her baby in a tree. Who was found and kept from starving by the Talbot family. They took him to America, hid him from the slavers, and out to Salt Lake Valley, where the kindly Mormons raised him. Gobo Fango was a shepherd, Gobo Fango was a man, and Gobo Fango wondered what his place was in this land. He lived with white skin people beneath the Squasage Range. He was a by many people, and he proudly kept his name. From his friend, the hunter family, he learned the shepherd's trade. A share of lambs for his own herd was Gobo's only pay. He had little use for money, and most of it he saved. But what he valued most of all was the green grass of the When the children saw him coming behind a white face band, they'd run ahead to greet him and they'd take him by the hand. They'd laugh and play among them around the shearing sheds. They'd sit upon his lap and curl the dark wool of his head. But the Civil War was ending and a new one had begun. Out on the western ranges where false fields had been spun. Now the grazing of the woolies could ruin all the land. And the ones who ran the cow believed it to a man. hot-headed nature, it could have been foreseen, that this fight led to shoot wherever grass was green, and for Gobo it was risky, for a man whose skin was brown, to be caught alone on Goose Creek, his blood could soak the ground. He was a cowman who was checking on his herd. When he saw Gobo's wagon 
gave his horse the spur, and in a fit of anger, he shot poor Bobo down, left him there for dead as he headed off to town. But Bobo wasn't done yet, he stumbled and he crawled, it truly was a miracle, he could move at all. Leaving the red streaks on the safe brush from his many bullet wounds. Till he reached Paul Matthews' homestead, the kindly folks he knew. Well, he only lived a short time, but the tale that he told was of a brutal murder that happened unprovoked. He said a man approached him, smiling in the morning sun. And when he reached to shake his hand, the other held a gun. Gobo died a few days later in the company of friends who knew him as a kind man. And when his will was read, he left all that he'd earned to the welfare of the poor. And this loyal dark skinned shepherd would see the rain no more. Some still say that the cowman fired in self defense. In the sights of Gobo's rifle, no man would have done less. To this day it's still debated, but the proof has long since passed. To that Oakley Cemetery, buried deep beneath the grass. If you're ever down in Oakley with its hell-kept coward ground, take some time to look and his marker will be found. Go out where sheep are grazing and look amongst the tangles and pick some wild flowers for the great of Gobo Fango. Gobo Fango was your shepherd, Gobo Fango was a man, and Gobo Fango wondered what his place was in this land. He lived with white skinned people beneath the Wasatch Range. He was loved by many people, and he proudly 